We have other worrying issues, for example, continuing hunger and also the rise of obesity. And you know, these are two contrasting situations that seemingly are happening simultaneously today in many communities. So this uh, situation uh, directly affects um, the human capital. So it is, of course, a worry to uh, agriculture because agriculture is, of course, the means of producing food. And if you are not consuming enough food or if you're consuming too much food, then it bites back into that whole system. And we also have um, situations where a lot of farms are closing down, you know, because of um, sustainability issues. And uh, there's a lot of economic uncertainty thrown in. And as a result, there's a lot of stress being created. So this is a worrying issue because this, if you are looking at agriculture in the long term, we must be able to fix this problem. Uh, then, of course, we have declining agricultural communities. Lesser people are getting interested in agriculture today. There is a need for us to revamp the system. As I said earlier, we need to get the disnification effect at full throttle. We need to step up our efforts. So this is an issue that is solvable. We surely can fix this issue uh, with time. But it's still worrying as of now. And then, of course, uh, because we use a lot of agrochemicals today, uh, a lot of reports have shown that chronic diseases have emerged. And, uh, and this is a worrying factor too because, uh, again, it relates to food safety. It relates to um, environmental considerations and uh, sustainability issues. So in combination, what we have is you create a new monster today. You know? um, so th there's also reports that are linking some of these chronic diseases to genetic modification of crops. Um, the debate is getting very intense. And I believe that there will be um, avenues for us to fix this problem. But as it is today, it is still a worrying issue. Okay? And of course, we also have this perennial problem of farmland loss to development. A lot of prime agricultural land is being converted into non-agricultural land use. So this is a concern because um, when you convert the land into a non-agricultural land use, uh, what's happening is you might be triggering a very difficult um, situation that is an irreversible uh, damage to the land. So it may no longer be suitable to um, carry out agriculture in that transformed land. So this is, this is something where a lot of communities are beginning to realize today, where there is a need for, for a serious um, effort to zone our uh, land use so that this particular land is suitable for this particular crop or this particular land is suitable for, say, biofuel production. Or maybe this particular land is no longer suitable for agriculture, therefore you can develop it into something else. So if we have a very uh, clear mechanism of understanding the suitability of this land according to its intended use and purpose, then we will be able to uh, fix this um, concern in the um, short term. But again, this is a work in progress. It also depends on the economics of the um, situation. So uh, I guess until then, we still hope that this will be fixed in the near future. Let's now discuss the challenges facing agriculture. One of the key challenges that we have today is resource scarcity. As you know, resources are never enough. Um, we have a problem with uh, declining acreage of agricultural land. Um, we also have a problem with soil fertility. So this is putting a huge strain into agricultural production. And uh, it's also providing us with an opportunity 
to, to go forward and explore um, alternatives to this. Then, of course, we have the human capital issue. We have a serious lack of skilled workers in agriculture. And uh, I think the, the bigger issue here is the age gap. You know, a lot of our farmers are, are old. And uh, we have an urgent need to attract the younger generation into farming. And uh, of course, when I discussed earlier, you know, I talked about the disnification effect on agriculture. Now that, again, has to be stepped up uh, so that we attract um, the younger crowd into agriculture. Then we also have the issue of growing population. Malaysia, we have just hit 30 million. And uh, we have more than 7 billion people living in this planet. And, uh, and the, the big question here is, how do we feed these people? So we have to step up our productivity. Uh, in the face of environmental and also ecological protection. So that, that's a huge challenge. Then, of course, we have the issue of climate change. Um, changing weather patterns uh, is causing a reduction in the amount of arable land for agriculture. The lands that used to be suitable for agriculture are no longer suitable because of uh, the effect of climate change. And uh, in lands that are still being able to uh, be used for agriculture, we have a reduction in crop productivity, which is also a direct impact of climate change. Now, climate change and agriculture is really um, a chicken and egg story, because agriculture can, on one hand, pollute the environment that accelerates uh, climate change. And then, of course, when you have that climate change, it affects the production of agriculture. So it's really a chicken and egg story. And uh, bottom line is it causes a serious threat to food security. So, so this is our uh, huge challenge. <coughs> then, of course, we have technological pressure. Um, conventional agricultural practices cannot meet the current production demand. Today, we are in dire need of high quantity and quality of agricultural produce or products with minimum labor. So we, we have to come to terms with the fact that we have to uh, enrich our knowledge. The K factor is necessary. In everything which we are um, trying to do, we have to put a premium to the K factor. And of course, uh, new technologies often uh, require a high startup cost. But if it is done properly, um, my take would be in the long term, uh, it will balance out. You know? So good examples are like, like clean technologies uh, using solar power and uh, wind turbines. These are all very high um, cost uh, technologies. But in the long run, it should be able to provide um, clear savings for the communities. Then, of course, we have oil politics. Uh, as you are aware, oil prices have been soaring lately. Um, we have um, 100 US dollars per barrel. And uh, this is definitely going to uh, result in a snowball effect in, in the whole chain of uh, agriculture um, supply chain. So, as you can see here, you know, the prices of oil have been hovering around that 100 to and thereabouts over the past one month. I'm quoting here January the 27th through February the 27th. So, this again is a huge challenge to agriculture. Well, um, looks like we have come to the crossroads. Uh, the question now is, do we go this way or do we go that way? Um, this is an interesting um, discussion here because do we look at farms of the future? Of course, on the other hand, we can even question the future of farms. But I choose to be optimistic. So how about the farm of the future? 
Now, this is an example of the farm of the future, which uh, I'd like you to take a closer look. You can see that in the future, farms are going to be fully automated. Instead of relying on human labor, we'll have the deployment of robots. And this is going to be very interesting because farmers, instead of carrying out the specific task, they will instead supervise robots in their daily task. And they won't be required to directly operate these robots, but they can remote control these robots into action. And it is no longer um, an illusion. It is fully achievable with today's uh, robotic advancements. In fact, the farm of the future should have the following characteristics. It should be able to um, carry out 24-7 operations, meaning to say you can even farm at night. It should improve safety. Okay, that's a very important uh, uh, consideration. And it should also reduce chemical usage. And uh, importantly, it will be able to assist in implementation of precision agriculture where you are able to crop at the plant level. That means individual plant, you know, because it no longer becomes an issue of accessibility because you're dealing with robots. And uh, another interesting uh, characteristic would be it allows for selective harvesting. So this again brings the whole dimension of smart farming into play. So this is an exciting um, idea, and uh, it is pretty much achievable given the availability of uh, robotics in, in today's agriculture. Then, of course, we can look at the other spectrum of uh, uh, future farms. Um, if you look at this uh, picture here, this is a very sophisticated uh, depiction of how um, the future farm may look like. You know, it looks like this farm is in the middle of the city. And uh, again, uh, you have uh, farms that might be looking something like this, where you have um, crops that are grown in the uh, middle of the city, in uh, buildings that are totally dedicated for crop production. Now, this is an interesting uh, perspective because we talked earlier about vertical farming. Uh, of course, the vertical farming which we talked about earlier did not specify that it can be done in the city. Now, this is what we call urban agriculture. Um, the concept of urban agriculture um, is very interesting because one of the interesting pointers about urban agriculture is it might provide the solution to reducing our carbon footprints. So this is uh, another example of uh, urban agriculture that you can see. You know, they look like UFO spaceships, but actually they are, you know, they are farms that are designed that way because there is um, uh, energy efficiency that has been embedded into the system. So, so this is basically how the future of farms may look like. And while there is, possible, there is a possibility that we might be dealing with this kind of a future, um, I think it also answers the question about uh, what is the future of farms. So with that, I think um, we have been able to cover the topic of um, innovation and challenges in agriculture. And I hope that you have benefited from this talk. And I wish you all the best. Thank you.